from PRX. Friends being binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, role players everywhere. Whether you're running the game or you're playing the game, or you're on, you know, whether you consider yourself an adventurer or adventure adjacent, uh, and you say that doesn't even make any, I say, are you sure it doesn't make any sense? Uh, I'm adjacent to an adventure. You'd say, What's the town next to Van Dalen called? Uh, that's not an any like you say. That's you know, what's uh, what's the trail next to Tribor Trail? You know what's the? Uh, I, I think there actually is adventures south of the Sword Coast, but uh, just off what are those islands called? Just off the Sword Coast that aren't involved in any adventures. Those are the adventure adjacent isles. Uh, so if this doesn't make any sense to you, probably means you're in the right place because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff and put you to sleep. Uh, like, talk about, I've forgotten more realms than, than have existed. Uh, so I'm so glad you're here. It's time for Sleep With Me. The show does not make a lot of sense. I'm here to be your friend in the deep, dark night and help you fall asleep because you deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, what we got coming up here is support. That's how the show's free for everybody uh, that wants it to be free for them. Uh, and then there's um, a long meandering intro. If you don't like the idea of su the support for the show, don't miss out on the intro because the intro is a show within the show meant to ease you into bedtime. And then there'll be uh, uh, like our uh, journey into the world of friends, friends um, designing and playing or kind of uh, friends in, a, in the friendship of adventure while creating adventure for a role-playing game. But the role I'll be playing is your friend in the deep dark night here to take your mind off of stuff and keep you company. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, thanks for coming by. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots, and I could really use your help. We're doing our yearly annual survey, and I'd be so grateful if you could take a few minutes and answer the survey. You could go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey, S-U-R-V-E-Y. Fill out the survey, and there's a box uh, towards the end where you could put in your thoughts about the show. So if there's anything you really wanted to let me know, you know, something you want more of, you're looking for something a little bit different. I, I don't know. Let me know right in that box. Like, give me your feedback, but please take the time to fill out that survey. It's so useful for the health and long-term sustainability for the show. So fill that out at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash survey. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. This is one part of the podcast where I get loud. It's because I love making this show, and it's listeners like you that make it possible for me to be here and the team of people that work so hard on this podcast to be here on a regular basis. And I want to thank Ruby. Now, Ruby's uh, not in a position to support the show financially, but Ruby set an alarm to spread the word about the podcast. Said, hey, I love Sleep With Me. It means so much to me. I want to let other people know about it. But, you know, it's not always easy to remember that tomorrow. So, uh, like, uh, send a reminder right now, like Ruby did. Hey, I want to support the show financially. Hey, I want to support one of the sponsors. Or, hey, I want to spread the word about the podcast. And I want to let Scoots know because I want to hear my name like Ruby's on the podcast because I love it too. I know Scoots loves making it. The show's here to make me feel less alone in the deep, dark night. I listen to it every single night and I want to do something to make sure it's there for other people that other people know about it too. So, uh, if you do, let me know about it. Sleepinmepodcast.com slash sponsors just use the form there like ruby did and let me know so i can say thank you for spreading the word like ruby next part of sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need right now if you're uh, having a tough time uh you need extra resources there's links in our show notes including international resources it's also about being a part of positive change uh not just saying black lives matter not just saying stop aapi hate not just saying support ukraine but taking action and uh do, do learning more and, and and then taking action uh so there's links to resources where you could do that in our show notes. You know, we're supporting uh, hygiene kits and the Amazon wish list and financial support for the Midnight Mission in Los Angeles. You can support the Trevor Project uh, through Orlando Park Stop fundraisers uh, um, uh, link. That's Those are both in our show notes. So please take some action. You'll feel great about it because you'll be a part of uh, these communities or, or like uh, we're all a part of. 
Uh, oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Uh, don't forget, get your sleep phones, uh, Sleep With Me branded sleep phones. Most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me. Sleep With Me podcast.com slash sleep phones. Sleep With Me podcast.com slash sleep phones. Use Sleep With Me to get five bucks off your order. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it's a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be something, you know, thoughts that you're thinking about, thoughts about the past, the present, the future. Thoughts about, you know, thoughts about nothing and, uh, like, thoughts about making love out of nothing at all. I, I don't know, that just popped, I had a thought about that, so I shared it with you. But, uh, like, I don't know why, I mean, I, I don't know why my brain thought of that. I said, thoughts about nothing, and my brain said, why have thoughts about nothing at all? And I'd say, I thought you had thoughts about making love out of nothing at all. And, uh... Then some part of my brain snickered and laughed and said, why don't you keep your hobbies to yourself, Scoots? And I say, okay, thank you for humble yet, yet another humbling moment with uh, my thoughts. It could be feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally, uh, like, uh, you know, the, like related to the thoughts or feelings or emotions that are left over from the day or that are just there. It could be physical sensations. It could be changes in time, temperature, routine, work schedule. You could be going through something. You could have something coming up, uh, or you could be going somewhere or have someone coming to visit. Whatever it is, I'm here to take your mind off stuff and keep you company so you can fall asleep and to let you know you're not alone in the deep, dark night. That's why I go through a, a list of stuff. I don't go through a litany of lists, though. Uh, once again, anytime the word litany of lists comes up, another song comes up, uh, which I, I still never definitively remember if it was... Uh, these are 80s songs, I think. There was a song by Hall & Oates, but I'm not still not sure. Is it a kiss on my lips or a kiss on my list? Uh, oh, no, it's list because it's of the best things in life. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense. I just, I probably figured this out in another intro, but I just figured, I remember I asked my daughter and she looked at me the same way you may be looking at me now. And I'm not making this up, true story. And I wasn't doing a bit. I said, I forget again. Is it, uh, is it a kiss on their lips or on their list? Uh, and she said, like, as my brain repeats it, their list, dad, on the list, it's, it's list, uh. And maybe she even went on to say, because you couldn't, it, a kiss couldn't be on your lips of the best things in life. It doesn't, that doesn't make, that sounds like something AI would say. I think something AI would say, though, would be kissing. You're, are we talking about kissing? Uh, that's, uh, that's another, that was a joke. But uh, uh, like, uh, so it is a list of the best things in life. And maybe I'll remember from now on because I say, oh, okay. Like, it would be like, uh, it's kind of like, these are a few of my favorite things. You wouldn't say, I mean, 
I don't know why I'm relating it back to that, but that's like a list of, of favorite things. Is there anything else listed in the song Kisses on My Lips uh, of the best things? What are the other best things in life? That's a real question. I mean, Hall and Oates, I, I, we, I mean, I don't know if I'd like, uh, if I was putting, if I was making a list right now, I'd make it because I, that's top of mind. But I'd put like, uh, I'd say, who's kiss, question mark, Hall and Oates, question mark. Uh, and then, you know, I'd, I'd probably try, then, you know, who here, who here, if you listen to Sleep With Me, you probably could relate to this fact that, uh, if I had to make a list of the best things in life, it would be performative. Uh, I, I'm not kidding. And like with crushing from performance pressure, like I'd have to say, is anyone else, are you going to watch me make this list? And they'd say, you're all you're like, uh, this is a, a thought experiment. Correct. Do you, what are the chances someone's going to read this list? Uh, and will they know it was me that wrote it? I don't know. I can't say what's okay. Cause that's it's a two different lists. then. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I wish that would be first on my list. I wish I was the kind of person whose list of the best things in life didn't matter if someone was reading the list or watching them list the list. But unfortunately the person who I am, I would probably make two different lists. Uh, and mine would be, that would be, I mean, that'd be the honest way say, w could you give me four or five millennium to come up with that list? Uh, cause right now I have who's kiss. And then, it, well, then I put in parentheses, a kiss would be nice though, for real. Uh, but I, you know, maybe I need to do more kissing to determine if what, if that kiss is the best thing, one of the best things in life. And, uh, okay. Hall and Oates is on there. And then, but now I can't stop thinking about you watching me making this list of the best things in life or me squirreling it away and then someone finding it, uh, or like it, what really would happen is I wouldn't do it on a piece of proper paper. I'd make the list on multiple post post-its that would become scattered around places I've been, maybe stuck to my bottom. Okay. Let me add a third thing. Post-its, uh. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I don't want to forget anything. And they say, you don't have post-its on the best, like, and I say, no, I, I mean, uh, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I put post-its on either list. This is just my list. Just so you know, like if someone found it, what if that's like a rom-com, right? I mean, this is a pretty long tangent to go on, but that's what would happen in my rom-com. I'd say, no, 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 no. That was just like a list, a brainstorming list for my list of the best things in life. Uh, and they'd say, you put whose kiss on there? And I'd say, like, uh, no, no. Again, that was when I was, it was uh, Hall and Oates. Who, and they'd say, who is even Hall and Oates? And I'd say, well, um, like, and this is post-its your number three thing of the best things in life. Uh, it, it, how many question marks are I? And I'd say, uh, this doesn't sound like a rom-com to me. I mean, if it was a fan of the who, but they said, who's kiss, but maybe I miswrote it. And so maybe there's another part of the rom-com where somebody else finds the list and we fall like they fall, but I say, I mean, that would be pretty, th this is starting to sound rom com -y. They, they They're a big who, a fan of the who. And they say, holy cow, it's at the top of my list too. And I say, who, who, who's at the top of your list? That was accidental. We walked right into a, like a, like a, like an old uh, vaudeville joke there. But I'd say, who's, wait, who's at the top of your list? Uh, but they would say, who, yeah, the who is at the top of my list. I say, oh, the who, who. Ooh, uh, oh, I thought, and then this other person, maybe it would be that. And then somebody else would say like, who's like, uh, from Whoville. And then you got, that's like a component of, uh, like a rom-com there. You got a little love triangle going, but, uh, it would all be, on, I mean, it, oh, maybe it could be like a, like one of those uh, body swap movies too, it, to overcomplicate it. And he'd say, is part of your list of the best things in life on your bottom? And I'd say, maybe. Like, uh, yeah, because when I put down post-its, I meant those super, the industrial post-its that I bought. 
Okay, I'm sorry, though. I'm trying to introduce a sleep podcast to new listeners. I was trying to say, I don't even know how I, oh, I don't know where I want to, I mean, I was just at the beginning of the intro. That was a serious meander. Oh, like, whatever's keeping you awake, you're not alone. That was my main message. Uh, That's the most important part of the show you'll hear. And I just, like, had nine minutes of accidental filler. And, uh, but it was, you know, that's what part of what works about the show. Pointless meanders and superfluous tangents as I send my voice across the deep, dark night. And the goal of the show is twofold or the, whatever the reasons for the show, uh, bo- I don't know. So that <laughs> now I'm going to put that on my list. Goal, have goals, uh, is your list of the best things in life a question-based list? I'd say, yeah. I mean, that'd probably be the wisest thing I ever did. Say so this is a list. I'm fine. I'm I'm checking. I'm checking them twice. Uh, gonna find out if this is uh, best things in life listy, or not. N- you know, not as nice. Uh, uh, you know, or just on the list of my favorite things. Also, I you know. Also, I'm having a perfor- Now I found out that I'm in this rom com. I'm gonna need multiple performative lists. Uh, Cause then what would happen in the movie is they'd write fake lists to make the person not love them creating even more complications. Maybe there's some sort of espionage thing. Like maybe they, they work for some sort of super advanced post-it factory. And those are the post-its with the secret ingredients. Uh, I don't know. Um, but I, I don't know. That's why I make the show. I do know a couple of things though. You deserve a good night's sleep. Really you do. You deserve a place you could rest where you could get the sleep you need, where your life is more manageable. Because everybody deserves that. A bedtime you don't have to dread. That's what we're all looking for. Uh, I mean, a lot of people that look listen to this show, that's what I was looking for. I didn't want to feel so lonely and hopeless in the deep, dark night. And I just wanted to get to sleep. And so that's kind of what led me to make this show. So um, whether you, oh, if you don't like the show, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you has other sleep podcasts and sleep stuff on there because you still deserve a good night's sleep. And the thing about being alone, I know this is a podcast. People like, like, you know, I'm like, uh, not perfect, but I can be here digitally for you. Um, but the thing is that it's not just me. There's hundreds of thousands of people who listen to the show who have been through it, who have been uh, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep. And they know how it feels. That's why they come back and listen to the show again, or they share about the podcast, or they support the podcast. Because they know how it feels in the deep, dark night. They know you deserve a good night's sleep. And a lot of them can probably relate to what you're going through, whatever's keeping you up. And that's what I mean when you're not alone. And, you know, like it does, like this is its own multiverse in some sense. Like even if you're listening and someone else is listening five minutes from now, and someone else listening in five years from now. We're connected, really. So uh, the, let's see what else happens. I, like semi voice across the deep dark night. I use the lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, all to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff. This is a podcast you don't really listen to. You just kind of listen to it out of focus. Clearly, I mean, you just saw whatever happened for eight minutes. I tumbled down a meander hole and. Uh, it, it was enjoyable. It didn't go anywhere, but it didn't go nowhere either. So this is a podcast you could, some people listen to me in a mumble, but some people are listening. Uh, I don't know. So you could kind of figure it out as you go along uh, because this show isn't here to put, put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep, to take your mind off of stuff, to be your friend in the deep, dark night, your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your neighbor. Your boar, what did it boar be? That's a new one. I think I, I listened to another intro where I said some other w- word like, uh, but boar bee's sticking. I think it was like boar bear, boar bear. I don't know. Boar bee's good though. And um, I'm just here to keep you company. And if you're skeptical or doubtful, like most people don't like the show when they first get here, it doesn't work for them right away. Because you probably tried a ton of different stuff and it's been frustrating. You probably spent a lot of money. And you probably have an expectation that a sleep podcast uh, 
that's been around for over 10 years or so has, uh, would follow some sort of traditional format and, uh, not talk about a rom-com based on lists, based on, um, like you accidentally going on two different tangents about 80 songs. So just see how it goes. That's what most regular listeners, most people that pay for the podcast that support it, that have supported it for years or support the sponsors, those are the people I hear from the most. And they say, you know, I didn't like the show at first, or I didn't get it. It took me a while to realize, oh, yeah, you just kind of barely listen, like a friend that's rambling on and on and on. So that's... um yeah, I mean, the, the, oh, uh, structure oh structure the show throws people off. Uh, yeah, I think that's the other thing I, I don't want. Like, so the show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls. So if you'll seen and welcome, you say, I could check this show out. Then there's support. So the show could be free because there's a lot of people who aren't in a position to support the podcast and benefit it, benefit it from, benefit that it's there for them whenever they need it. And that there's like about 600 free shows you could listen to at any time. So you could listen to your, pick your favorites and stuff. The support allows that. And the people that do support the companies that support the show. Uh, then there's a long meandering intro. And for some reason, if people don't like the support, they lump the intro in with it. And I don't want you to miss out on the intro. I guess you're already listening to it. But uh, for next time, the intro is a show within a show. But it's not so much here to put you to sleep, just like the podcast isn't here to put you to sleep. The intro is meant to ease you into bedtime. And I just heard from someone named Matt, Matt M, who uh, started supporting the podcast, who said, hey, at first I skipped the beginning of the show. And then I realized having a bedtime routine is what really works. And that's true. And so some listeners are getting ready for bed, some are in bed getting comfortable, but a lot of listeners are doing some sort of other chill wind down activity. Uh, like, like that's just what's work, work like, uh, like whatever it is, uh, to ease you into bedtime. And then after the, uh, intro is some support and then there'll be our bedtime story, our episodically modular series. You could listen to it in any order. Uh, journey into the world of friends uh, about friendship and gameplay and adventure. And uh, it's a really nice one. Uh, and uh, so I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate you checking the podcast out. Give it a few tries, see how it goes. But I really hope, you know, and I'm not looking, you know, performatively. I mean, here's the thing. If you relate to having that, idea, I mean, that's like what what's another thing that unites us in the deep, dark night. Not everybody who's listening is going to realize that uh, or have shared that thing. But there's a lot of people listening who have that relationship with the world. You say, you're right. I would have. I mean, if especially if it was at school, I'd say, what are the parameters? I mean, I wouldn't because I wasn't a good student, but I'm, I'm projecting onto a good student. They'd say, what are the parameters of this best things in life? I'd be thinking about if the person I had a crush with, I'd try to design my list for them. Or like if I fought like in a similar way to a crush, if I had some sort of mentor situation or some like uh, authority figure I was trying to impress, which usually I didn't have that relationship, but like at school, but like I'd say, okay, like I'd use my list of the best things in life to get what I thought were the best things in life, which in rom-com fashion would turn out not to be what I really want, what really wanted or needed. And, uh. I don't know what it would be like, uh, like, uh, but, uh, you know, that's just the, the, what would happen. I mean, that's just what happens with me. I mean, I'm a performative list maker when, when even when alone, I mean, not, high, I'm not a high performing performative list maker either. I'm a low performer who say, okay, this is why we procrastinate. People say, why do you procrastinate? Well, do you have like two or three hours during the intro of a sleep podcast for me to explain to you? They say, well, golly, I just made 12 lists of the best things in life. Ran out of paper. That's why I'm at the store, sir. What are you doing? Huh, funny. That's funny because I just ran out of paper uh, because, uh, I don't, like, uh, I, but tr trying to, like, uh, yeah. I was brainstorming lists of the best things in life that I didn't believe in, believe it or not. They'd say, you're hired. That was a, you know, I said, oh, okay. 
thought this was a rom-com, but now it's turned into something different. But anyway, I'm glad you're here. Like, I, I'm sorry if you identify with the, like those things, but it's share. We're, you're not alone. If you're if you have a need to performatively make lists, uh, in case other people you feel like other people are going to read them and judge them, I do too. And and uh, I don't feel bad. Like I laugh about it now because I know I'm not alone. So and you've you you've you've enabled me to do that. Uh, so thank you. And thanks for listening to the show. I work really hard at your Nanesh Driver. Really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's the ways we're able to do it for you for free choice week. All right, everybody. Scoots here. It's time for our episodically modular series, uh, Journey into the World of Friends. Uh, and don't worry, the characters, it's a group of characters playing a game together. They're actually designing a role-playing adventure and they're kind of playing it at the same time. And they're in the midst of an adventure of friendship on top of it. So a lot of adventuring going on and yeah, a lot going on. So it's, uh, but talk about, uh, the world of friendship. I have a friend and, uh, that friend's name is Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, the friends behind the binary. So, ladies and gentlemen, so boys and girls, it's time for a journey into the world of friends. Whoopee. Scooter, I noticed, uh, you know, we're friends, but you didn't make any friendly, uh, 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 like, uh, pokes at me, my, my driving, my charm, my wits. Uh, you didn't pl- also didn't plug my movie, uh, but that's fine. Uh, no movie plug. Yeah. All right, that's Journey in the World of Friends. Make sure to check out all of Antonio. Go on Antonio's IMDP page and then sign, you know, if you're in a position to do so. What I think it'd be best if you, they like physical media, you know, if you want to support, talk about physical media, that's the first thing that uh, enters my mind is Antonio because uh, I'd say you're one chunk of, or hunky chunk of uh, physical media. And this is uh, Journey into the World of Friends. All right, everybody. Uh, this is Granada of Darmok. Uh, Granada of Darmok. Okay, so everybody come in, please. Uh, let's get right into story mode and character mode, please. Uh, I know everyone is not feeling overjoyed. You know, this indoors lifestyle, home lifestyle, I know, I know, I know. But we're going to deal with it as characters and in-game right now. And I'm going to start out. Don't worry. I could see by those furrowed brows how you're feeling about me and my ideas, and that's fine. But as characters, I can see why you feel that way, too. Because we've been camping outside of this train station together for a while now, waiting for that full moon or whatever it was uh, to find that mechanical being or a spiritual of a mechanical being that we could meet with to get guidance as characters. We've been camping together in this incredibly boring place. Not a lot of people here. And, uh, yeah, it's not been easy. I mean, but, uh, you know, like, uh, I'll start because sharing a tent with Lord Von Chill and being a new member of this party, even though the care, you know, being a new version of the mem, you know, being a new, feeling new, uh, has me, uh, uh, frowny faced and, uh, trusted, trusted of frost, 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 trust, frustrated of frost, uh, frost upon me, you know, not feeling welcome necessarily, uh, and with, but without pointing the fingers of my sweet leather gloves, uh, oh, go ahead, Lord Von Chill, obviously. Yes, yes, I'm Lord Von Chill, and I am tainted of ire, <laughs> tainted of ire, the field of tainted ires, uh, and I'm also, uh, tall of skeptic, uh, oh boy, am I towering over my field of taters of ire. Tall of skeptic about this, uh, this adventure that we're sharing together. 
as a group and as individuals and as a smaller individual, like a coupling or non cup you know. You know, I feel like I've been excited about this adventure. Could it be as free and uh, okay as it feels, or is it? Is this not? Am I like uh, once again? I find myself uh, tainted of ire. Uh, oh, I guess my go ahead, uh, Zell. You seem to be like yes, I'm Zell. Thank you. Uh, I'm V of N, and. Uh, Loose lusts of gel uh, at this shine and joy and freedom and imperfection. And that's all, yeah, yeah that's how, that's where I am. I'm Eleanor uh, of the Free Florences, and I'm uh, Gree of Ang. <laughs> Gree of Ang. Maybe a little, because to stay at the Three Florences, a little Lee of Ang. And maybe a Gree of Hang, because there's no snacks, because. Uh, why are there no snacks? I think because there's no snack rations uh, given out. Uh, I don't understand the third odd. I, but anyway, that's fine. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm those grees and uh, of angs. I'm out of here. I'm uh, up of fed. It dumps in the down and less of power about all this right now. Okay, okay, Granada of Darmok here, since I'm in the leading today. Uh, you know, this is what happens uh, underneath the surface of all adventures. And I think it's important for us to remember that, uh, that uh, this is what, you know, the adventure only takes place above the, you know, this is uh, below the below. But let's go to neck, like, uh, let's run through what happened last week. I do have notes uh, from last time Eleanor led, uh, and we talked about choosing sides. Was there going to be three sides? You know, the uh, Baron of the Boyle, the Park, and Vendul. Uh, then we worked on some development of Vendul, who will be our uh, rival or our uh, uh, could, could be our challenger. We talked about motivations as a party and motivations as individuals. And I think thinking about that uh, in a freeform way for future adventurers through the Sultana, the Oracle machine that also is magic uh, and the child being or uh, this ride based being uh, and what each of those tying into uh, practical needs and wants versus, you know, versus some of the things that might run under those. Now, like maybe one of those could be uh, unlimited snack rations. Uh, maybe they're potato based. Uh, it's funny. Uh, we talked about being the backup for the Baron of the Boil, Leader X. Uh, what are their motivations? Uh, it's interesting too, the Leader X thing. It reminds me of other adventures I've been on. Um, as, uh, that, uh, what do you call that? That, um, sometimes someone appears early in the adventure you think is going to be important and they're not. Uh, uh, we talked about how there's the water, like there's something going on that we probably can observe that, uh, Vendul is using, uh, ride beings or what maybe mechanical beings at first we think, uh, or some sort of force uh, to do what we thought was uh, trying to control the locks and the wave-based power systems and the water. But really what they're trying to do is drain some of these waters because the water is a cork on top of this uh, portal to another world. Uh, Vidul the Green uh, we must witness when Vidul casts this powerful spell to oppose the Baron's forces. Uh, we went through some brainstorming about uh, no bad ideas. We also covered the uh, the uh, the the, um, um, the Polywogs, our first adventure. And again, a lot of freeform people could rush through it in a um, quick way. 
and just look at battling or, uh, you know, if there was a DM that wanted to hold some sort of short trial or if the characters were more interested in, in a, getting, getting away or, you know, building towards solutions and communicating. I don't think we quite got down to uh, what would happen next, the solution to all that, but we'll do a little bit more reviewing. Uh, toy labor, the Vidul. Um, what else do we need? Uh, to, overall story, we we've, have to start looking at the ending. Uh, well, locking in Vidul, Vidul's level. These were kind of open-ended questions. I don't think we need to close at this moment. Um, what is the arc of the polywogs? Because, again, so are we trying to unite these two groups of polywogs? Or just, uh, like, oh, like, what's holding the polywogs from telling on us? Or what are we offering them other than the fact that these other, po like, other than the communication, do we even need to answer those questions or could the DM be the one answering those? And uh, let's see, look, these are other things that may have come up towards the end of our session. What if the mechanical child, uh, specific quests or emotional quests, uh, is the... Uh, is Vidul actually the offspring of some sort of, or being convinced they're the offspring of some sort of a dra dragon friend that's not a friend at all? A goal lined with the emotional needs of each member of the party as a whole. Magical cards so we, that we covered. Uh, uh, yeah, full moon, that's what we waited for while we were so frustrated. Uh, disappears if you approach, you listen into it. We, don't, we know these are specifics, but again, I guess we're going through this adventure together now. And we'll figure out the specifics. Uh, uh, but yeah, maybe something also specific about the beings in this ride, that the mechanical child being, uh, and maybe that they're being changed and discarded. So a little bit more backstory, but in the forms of clues and not clarity. Um, but that uh, they're almost like working on a schedule and they're able to go home after work. Uh, is this mechanical child actually a magic use? Uh, like we, we and didn't return to this, uh, on my research this week, but, uh, is it a guest, uh, wizard? Is it a, a part of the ride that learned how to use magic or has magic staff? Okay, we didn't do one of the goals we had this week uh uh was about uh looking at the iterations of this ride and some of the undercurrent of the ride in the history which we that was we were unable to do that because of uh we also didn't have access uh so we, uh, f uh 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 Eleanor do you want to talk about yeah, this is Eleanor. So we did want to talk about these ideas of, uh, you know, from the earlier time that at one point this, like, this this uh, attraction has uh, gone through different iterations, uh, kind of ref reflective of the culture abroad. It was U.S. kind of focused at first, even though it was inter considered an international ride. And based on, uh, like, uh, like, like in the music and the ride has changed, uh, but it's always been like, uh, anthropomorphized animal toys, uh, and they've kind of changed. And there was also this Kauai period. And, um, I think that is important thematically to think about that as like, like, again, a subtle form, because even though this was a giant company, the people that worked for the company tended to be of the rebellious nature. And so they wanted to weave uh, subtle acts of rebellion in, in, in progressive values into the ride, even if it was in an undertone. And when they refurbed the ride in that style with the J-pop soundtrack and those things, I think that was guiding some of that. Like is similar to, but we didn't get to really research that uh, because I wanted to. I know it was originally, I think, a student movement, 
or uh, so yeah but it, it, it was always associated with kind of a pop culture but before it was pop culture and then again it went through like uh, the only the music then the soundtrack has combined uh, the uh, as far as we could tell three areas eras of music and one i'm using quotes of like a j-pop soundtrack and then a k-pop soundtrack before at the at the the towards the end of the like uh, the earlier times, and do you want me to keep continuing? I mean, looking at uh, the first room, and when we encounter the first room, uh, what would be in there? Because it was supposed to be uh, like this idealized toy version of Europe. Uh, and everybody says, well, that's great. You put it like, uh, but so what we decided to focus on, uh, like Zell, wanted, Zell, do you want to take it? Yeah, so, I mean, I think an important thing, and I don't know if we talked about this last week, but uh, with the No Bad Ideas, I think it came out of that, the good parts of the No Bad Ideas, that this would be a, uh, okay, like, uh, I feel like we like have to picture this, right? So we never came out with specifics. Uh, but, well, we kind of got to the idea that the polywog said, oh, yeah, we have that room blocked. There is the first room of the ride, but what's blocked off, we're keeping them in, not us out. Uh, but also the idea that the polywogs are territorial, and they just wanted to live uh, in their little world. And that was kind of the thing of the duel. And thematically, that kind of transfers to the next room, is that the next room, they are also territorial. And so they're happy that they that there's not access between the two areas and that they don't exist with one another. And that as we sneak into the ride, uh, probably through, like, going... Uh, like, I don't know, like, I think that the idea, at least the setup would be that, uh, the, the ideal way to go into the ride, if we were doing it, what I would recommend is not to like charge into the room, but to like sneak in the room and listen. And I think that's, you know, we'd use Granada of Darmok to listen and we'd use all our, whatever our areas of strength are to find out as much as we could and progress as slowly as possible. Though obviously whoever's running the game that we're creating, they could determine things a little bit differently. But that we would observe that, yeah, one, well, we never decided, is the canal filled in this room? Um, I kind of think it should be. Um maybe it should be in every room. I think we had gone back and forth about that and that uh, maybe that's how we access it and that these mechanical beings, they cannot get wet uh, or they can't go in water. I mean, maybe they like, uh, so that somehow we're going under the water, but that we want to sneak into the ride, at least if we were doing it, I think we'd all agree on that. And that we would hide and observe and I think out of the no bad ideas, does anybody want to take it of what we're observing and what we're seeing? Or uh, uh, Lord Von Chill, Wada, anyone? Well, Lord Von Chill here. So we, I could go over the, uh, again, what history we were able to gather. But, but again, it's a fiction anyway. Is that, uh, yeah, there was very representative architecture of famous tourist areas. So you had like a Big Ben, uh, castles, uh, rainbow with a gold pot of gold, windmills, uh, a few different stages for dancing and performing music, mountains, uh, Eiffel Tower, like a lot of uh, iconic pieces of architecture or of uh, landscape. Uh, you know, also stuff in the sky, suns and kites, and and uh, and then also uh, some. Oh, another thing was giant clocks, and 
I know we have other things, but uh, yeah, we, so what we would observe is, uh, now we weren't sure about this and it developed as the week went on, but that uh, what we start to observe is uh, that when we're struck by what great condition this room and the, the, the characters are in, the friends, oh, the, yeah, okay, so we're referring to them as friends, thank you. And we said, wait a second, shouldn't these things be falling apart? Uh, but uh, we start to look at them and say, okay, wait a second, they look like they've been patched together, or but they're in great shape. Uh, they're well cared for. So that would be our first impression as we're observing from a place, uh, as uh, uh, like Wada was saying, or I'm sorry, uh, Zell. And uh, like maybe Wada, you could go through what we're observing, but again, overall, we're seeing that. Uh, wait a second, are they? Is this some sort of? They seem to be doing something together. Like, and, and maybe at first we say, wait a second, are they coming after us? But it quickly becomes apparent that they're in a rehearsal. Uh, for a dance and musical show, but they're also very frustrated. Uh, because there's no music, and and so they kind of are. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Like maybe uh, they're feeling a bit of how we've been feeling, like each group, uh, and but they still have the need to do this rehearsal, even though there's no music. There's people with instruments. I don't think we I talked about that. There's horns, uh, bagpipes. Uh, and uh, they can't play the music, and then the dancers are trying to dance, but how are you going to dance? And they're trying to keep time, maybe. And, um, yeah, is there anything else? Uh, I mean, eventually we'll get to the adventure part, but uh, we know kind of what they're missing. I don't know if what else we could observe. Uh, maybe we see someone, I mean, I guess this was something we discussed, but it didn't like returning from work or some of them returning from work. I feel like this is a uh, part of the, these characters are being reserved for something else, some other purpose. And they are left alone where there's other parts of this attraction that they're not a part of, uh, like, so they're the furthest removed from the day to day work, uh. So they're being reserved for, for, for some other future purpose. And again, we discussed, well, are they going to, to do like, uh, or are they just left alone? Uh, like, do they go off for training? Can we see any of them returning from training? Oh, yeah, here's the, st like, for stage two of uh, Vidul's plan. Uh, but we can see that they've been taken care of. Uh, and we also had these ideas about them coming to life, uh, but I think, Wada, why don't you take it? Okay, yeah, so we're still in the, um, I mean, we know what we know of our brainstorming, but the, the idea that there's going to be factions within the ride and that this is like the special faction and they view themselves as that way and they're waiting for their purpose uh, so they're somewhat pampered and cared for. Now, of course, they think their purpose is one thing, but Vidul, of course, has something, you know, not positive waiting for them. But also, interestingly enough, what had come up under the surface, uh, because these are sentient conscious beings, they have a sense of um, ease on and uh, reef uh, because they say, well, what's what, what like... Uh, We've seen what's happening with these other groups and the and the attraction. We've seen Vidul and uh, the power of Vidul, uh, the green. So uh, what you know, we're not feeling comfortable. And and when they when we're revealed to them, uh, that reef is going to be powerful because they're going to say, "Well, we got to turn them over to Vidul and telling them right away." Uh, but. Uh, there's something else they want greatly, which is the first thing or the second thing we observe other than the conditions is their actions rehearsing. And as long as we observe enough, we can clearly see that they're rehearsing for performances and that they're traded a frost, but uh, that they're feeling really, uh, they also love it like that. It, like they may have another purpose for Vidul, but this is their purpose. Uh, 
And in some sense, it's like a weird uh, middle world that they're in. Not to go off topic and get too far ahead of us, but that uh, I didn't think about it this way. You know, th- their their world has changed drastically. And again, something we talked about is that uh, maybe part of their sentience. Did we write any of this down? I mean, so the idea that uh, this portal isn't just a portal. It's also a well, like there's a well from our world sitting on it. So this is like, uh, it's beyond our understanding. It, that's not just an excuse. But that, uh, and this is what Vidul and uh, these other beings that are trying to manipulate Vidul are uh, trying to get to. And that source is a collection of power, not just magical power. But that uh, in the before times, this became where that power was gathered as people uh, changed their states of being to other places. Some of their essence was left behind in a non-sentient form. So this isn't a, re- this is not a, we're not getting into, a, what do you call that? A, not reanimation or, a, but anyway, like, I, I guess a, that's okay. I won't, I don't need to remember rebirth or whatever you call it. No, there, this is just like their energy, but maybe it has some remnants of that. So maybe it is like that a little bit, but that, that's that been gathered in a pool that's somehow also sitting on top of this portal or something like that. And so the combination of the powers, mostly good powers are leaking out of the portal, combining with this also well of essence uh, magical spiritual essence, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, is what uh, create. I mean, this is what we part of our belief system outside of this game, and that is what uh, like created sentience of the park, uh, and that is why these beings are sentient beings, but they're not all. They're new sentient beings. Um, what's interesting. And I guess you'd say it's mechanical muscle memory is like they mostly are associated with their characters or their attraction, which I think is like, like I mean, important for us to learn. Like they've been performing as these characters for so long uh, that, of course, their sentience is going to be a part of that. Um, Granada, do you want to run through the summary again like, uh, and just uh, to do that? Uh, sure. Thank you. So summary. Uh, so, okay. So these are top sh- shape, uh, animatronics. Uh, they probably, this will, this is again, uh, now become a little more fluid. Like at first we're like, they go out to be repaired or touched up and probably trained, uh, but we're fuzzy on that. I mean, which would, uh, be, I don't know. Uh, but so the other thing we didn't discuss that they will have to reveal to the party is that it was sometimes care, like they, like there's, uh, even though they're kind of a troop, a performing troop or a set of performing troops that has learned to perform together, there's some members of the, their, uh, troop that are not, that have gone out for training or whatever and haven't made it back. And also, these are kind of in the realm of no bad ideas. Like, there's rumors of scrap heaps uh, of uh, characters from the rides that have not followed the rules. And also, this idea, and I don't know if it's going to be what's reserved for them, but of, like, Voltron. Remember that character from, uh, like, uh, there was a traction at this park about it or something, the panda Panda Force, remember that it was combined. Uh, like, yeah, they had Panda Force, uh, that there's some sort of other toy like that that's very large, uh, and it's a combination of the other toys. I think, but the important fact is if they, they feel like if they follow the rules, which we would again have to learn through interacting with them uh, after we observe them, is uh, that they're forced to live uh, like, oh, no, they're, they're allowed to live uh, in this isolation, blocked off from the rest of the ride. They want music. Uh, there is a band and dance leader. Originally, we found, fell on the idea that there would be no noise and that they could only communicate uh, by motion. But we decided against that in that just there's no music. Uh, 
because we thought that would be kind of hard. Like, are they communicating by telepathically? Because there's a lot to communicate and it just doesn't seem as fun. Like if it was just by lip reading a physical motion or drawing or writing, these are the ideas. Uh, and then there's this, still the question of like, do they actually, what do they need to make music? Uh, but I think we finally found out it was like, do we have to go get speakers? Is there some sort of magical intervention that has to happen? Uh, do we have to connect them to power? But then we kind of came up with the idea that, yeah, no, their life force is a, a, has an electric energy to it. And it's also drawing on the, the energy within the attraction. And that kind of goes to why they can't leave the attraction very far. And that that mechanical being that we saw outside the train station is, again, just a projection, a magical projection and not a real being. Uh, so they don't actually, these aren't real, they don't know that the instruments they have are not real. So they don't understand some simple facts. Uh, and it, or maybe again, talking about what happens beneath the surface, uh, they don't want, like, they have no desire to understand, like, uh, that would be pretty confusing to be like, no, you're just a part of a ride, but somehow you became sentient. Uh, I guess you would just kind of like try to adjust to that if you knew it anyway and move on. So telling them that they're not real instruments, even though their whole makeup is based on them playing the instruments for thousands and thousands of hours a year. Um, also the f fact, I think this is important and I'm glad that it brought, they could be that the happiness is possible for them. And, uh, we want to enable, like the music will like, uh, and even, and they believe that and actually it's true. Now they want to, uh, they're all before our arrival, all they wanted to do was gain the music to be happy. Like when they're not working for Fadul or waiting to work for Fadul. But now we're in an opportunity to offer them change, uh, but happiness is possible for them. Also, that they have some sort of secret or piece of a secret. Um, so that's, I think, I, I, like, uh, someone wanted to take it uh, from there. Yeah, this is uh, Zell. What if we um, pretend uh, um, that we're communicating with them now? Uh, because I know we would have to communicate with them to get information about what do they need. Uh, probably would be rolling to find out, can we persuade them to hold off on tell, like, do we need to surprise them? And like, should we split up and cover the exits? I think so. Did we observe long enough to know where the exit is? Or if there's any secret places where Vidul could observe us? And everybody's nodding. So, and again, there's no DM. So sure, that's what we'll do. And we'll just presume we're somewhat successful. Then some of us with the highest charisma will reveal ourselves. Uh, and uh, what we want to find out is, uh, hey, we're not here to cause trouble. We're just trying to get some information. Because what do we want as a party? We, like, uh, we need to k progress to the next room. But obviously the way they're going and coming is probably observed by Vidul. And I guess this goes to like maybe going to the boy, like I guess this, we didn't even discuss this, but uh, maybe there's something with us being the backup for the Baron of the Boil, that there was some sort of thing within the pumping station or the wave power station that uh, the Baron has assigned us a task like that. So our main tasks are, I think, I don't know why we didn't think of this sooner, but our main tasks are, one, to, to activate this device that would ever allow the free form, free flow of the water um, in, in a more organic way, I would say, because wave pumping stations are still going to need to, uh, like, to flood the area, basically. So the park would be flooded, which would protect the power source. 
but it would also like the Baron of the Boyles is mostly interested in the water being able to go. Like, so there must be some sort of device. You know what I mean? That should be our main assignment. Uh, yeah. And then assignment two, just as important, but not as important. Or is it, uh, find the Baron, find her son. But then we also have our other agendas. And I think that's important because now, wow, we got lucky with this. So we're establishing a relationship with these sentient beings, the polywags. And now, so we're going to want to find an alternative solution because otherwise it would mean the flooding of the park. Uh, wow, we got really lucky here. So, we're, but we're already, and maybe that creates a little inter-party tension. And then again, with any NPC parties, we will meet in the future and the Baron's son. That's like, oh, no, no. We, like, even if you were to defeat De De Vidul, there will be another power. We must, like, get rid of this pumping station. But the result of getting rid of the pumping station would be that the spark would be flooded. Uh, and maybe that goes to, like, uh, the, what they discovered, like, Leader X or whatever. Like, there's no reason to explore this park. Anyway, it's uh, just flooded. I mean, I guess the polywogs wouldn't mind because they, they'll be fine. And I think that's powerful. Why didn't we not think about that? Because it's like, uh, and it ties into how we, what we believe. Uh, we can't let these uh, poor sentient uh, ride beings down that are uh, non, I mean, they're not, they're mobile with, but they only can exist in their own area. Well, I'm really grateful. Uh, this is a powerful thing we've stumbled on. Uh, can somebody take it? I'm a little stunned. This is Eleanor. Sure. So um, we kind of came up with some, well, first we kind of brainstormed um, uh, like different um, personality traits uh, and uh, like uh, of different, uh, like to try to think of like uh, what would be, what characters would be we'd be encountering. We also came up with lists of, like, uh, things we could look to later, uh, both, of you know, from the game of, like, smaller beings that we could compare, st stat, you know, stat blocks to, and later on, mecha bigger mechanical beings we could, play, like, uh, uh, compare stat blocks to. We also did a lot of research into these Modrons, uh, which exist in another universe, uh, and I, I think that was good as far as, like, it giving us some reference, but not uh, too applicable because they live in a caste system. Oh, that was the most important thing is that they're drawing their life force from in return. That was the main thing we got that, uh, that was already covered is this well of, uh, of life force. But they're very, like, logical. Where I don't think these beings are going to be as logical and stuck in conformity. Um, oh, yeah, here it is. This There's a notes from the earlier. How did we forget this? I guess with the, everything that's going on. The park has a life force of everyone who is nearby. Uh, but they're not ethereal beings. It's just their force now. And that force has been released into the rides and the characters. It has somehow to do with the water, uh, but not the portal, but they're like those things are touching one another. And um, who wants to do the uh, names that we came up with for the characters in the room? Well, L Lord Von Chil Dog Quixote, whom, and Pupo Panza, and Pupo pa but those two are confused. <laughs> like, uh, I like this idea. Those two are confused. So, Popo Panza's the leader of the band and the dancers, and uh, Dog Quixote is uh, the sidekick. Uh, I think that I just think that's very funny. Uh, uh, like you, 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 you all think it's funny, and uh, so those two. But uh, so that's the assistant leader of the uh, like uh, running the rehearsal are those two. Then we have, uh, what does it say? Oh, Buffant, uh, Buffalo, uh, 
uh, oh, these are the so this will be the main source of trouble when we reveal ourselves. The Buffant Luffalo guards, uh, and those are famous in England. You know that uh, they were in charge of the castle or something. Uh, so they will be the main ones. They don't. They they just listen to the music, and they are actually guards. Uh, flamingo dancers. That was an easy one. Lucky the leprechaun, leopardcon. Oh, uh, leopardcon. So the because they had that uh, uh, chewy toy soldiers band, uh, or we said oh toy poodles band. But I think chew, uh, chew, toys chewy toy uh, toy soldiers made of chew toys, and like maybe even a, a, a toy poodles hanging off one of them. But there'll be a ba- the band right. Uh, one of the bands, uh, Cat Can't Dancers, of course, Cluck and Spiel Band, band uh, that'll be funny. Uh, uh, bo- bolo- bolole Ballet Dancers, so bulls, I think we've seen this before, but I still like the image of uh, ballet bulls, uh, Bolole Ballet Dancers, uh, Goat Yodelers, we never came up with something for Bagpiper. And then uh, this character who is a little bit more sentient uh, that we will meet, but we started to brainstorm, uh, Mary Blair Repair. Uh, Wada? Okay, so let's get back into the game mode. This is really working. Is uh, The further we get as characters in this game mode. So we're talking, we calm down the uh, Buffalo guards uh, and say, hey, we're here to help tell us about what's going on. We were watching you and uh, we're not, you know, we're like, uh, maybe we explain to them that we're from another world. We're not there to mess with them. We even find out, well, we've got, they've got a good thing going. And no, of course, there's going to be one of them that we can't trust uh, that'll like go against us. But for the time being, we find out that we can't proceed the way they come in and out because there's too many of uh, Vidul's go- real guards. And obviously, the other thing we talked about is like uh, that Vidul is going to be so powerful that uh, there's no way a party could face them, face Vidul directly now, but probably even later. And again, that's what that would fit with this great idea that uh, made itself apparent tonight. That uh, yeah, we're not even there to battle the duel. We could, or any party could, but we're there to enact this plan of the Baron of the Boils, find the Baron of the Boils' son, and get out. And maybe there's even supposed to be a boat hidden so we can just take the boat down to the Baron of the Boil. And then we said, well, was the bo- we know what that whole thing with the mist dragon, what happened with the boat. So, um, so we talked to all of them and we say, okay, don't worry. We're, we're, and that's the truth. We're not um, being duplicitous. We're just here. They maybe tell us, oh, yeah, there was another party that came through at some point and they tried to go through that door. They got caught. I mean, that kind of makes sense. So, okay, well, we can't go through there. How long ago is that? Not to, oh, that lines up with the timeline for the Baron of the Boil. What are you doing? Maybe we even find that out. Oh, no, the Baron of the Boil, like, uh, no, we're draining swamps. Why would we be draining swamps? Uh, oh, these other things that happened. So maybe we're getting an incomplete picture of what Vidul's up to. There's also like uh, some sort of clue that maybe is not apparent at first of like, oh, well, you know, why are you repaired? Uh, what happens to c- c- characters? Because, again, we have to get to this. How do we meet Mary Blair repair? Um, oh, so, oh, actually, I thought we came up with a solution later. But basically, we have to get to the point in the negotiations where they say, okay, well, and maybe they, like, uh, you know, ask us if they could be alone to discuss. And they say, well, we do need something. We can't get our musical instruments to work. And Mary Blair Repair went to, went to go find them and said we needed, like, I think they won't understand, but this Mary Blair Repair, 
uh, that's one of the people keeping them in everyone in working order. And maybe even Vidul knows about it. I don't know. But like, uh, and she went to go get uh, speaker wire, but they will say like reeds, you know, woodwind, we, we, you know, we use woodwinds or whatever. Cause they think that'd be fun. Um, but basically we, they say, well, we have to play music. It's in our hearts. Uh, and maybe they have one wire. Maybe that's how we confirm all this is possible. Or maybe it's been broken and we are able to fix it somehow, but it's only one wire. And then they, we see that actually when they use it, it activates their speaker and they are able to play their individual instruments. Um, I mean, it could make sense from a magical perspective that it's like their speaker is an organ in some sense, you know. And it's like a me- it's not like a, an, a mammal like us where it's like a memory. It has its own mini brain or something connected to the history of the ride. And eventually they could sync it up with the dancing and stuff. I mean, if we're really, you know, no bad ideas, uh, that is possible. So they really want to be able to play this music and they see it as a win-win. If you go find Mary ba- Blair, we know where she went. Uh, and then they explain this idea of shoots, like each room has a chute uh, that goes down to some of the handy hallways from uh, the other thing we learned about. And they say, well, the only problem with our shoot was that Mary Blair was going down this ladder and the ladder like went down. So if you could go find Mary Blair or the speaker wires, uh, either one, um, that would be humongous for us. Uh, and we say, okay, we think we could do that. Uh, if you don't tell the duel, and then we already know, okay, well, we'll have to figure something else out anyway to progress in the traction. Maybe it's down there where the hand, like the handy halls are famous, but maybe there could be one other thing they know. Um, or they say, oh, maybe they say Mary Blair had a map or something with her. She knows all about the handy halls because uh, she goes in between those things. And maybe, you know what I'm saying? Or maybe there's more than one. Maybe it's not just Mary Blair. I don't know. In the other rooms, there's another repair-based being. So then we find out that in the on the Big Ben is where if you go inside the roof of the Big Ben, that's where there's a like a shaft going down to another level, to the handy halls. Maybe it's for garbage or maintenance access. We don't know. Granada, do you want to take us home? Oh, sure. Thanks. Um, okay, so we talked about, yeah, maybe that's where they used to put the trash or maybe that's still where they put the trash now. It's a shoot to the lower level. It's possible for us to, you know, use ropes and secrecy. And the good thing is it's inside the big band. So if Vidul's uh, minions come, the ride, as long as no one tells on us, which they would be motivated to not tell on us, unless they were setting it, you know, an, like an apatra, like... um which they could do that, but if we don't return, you know, if we do return with the speaker wires, they might think, okay, glad you gave us the wires. By the way, here's Vidul's minions. That could be possible. That's probably a decent idea that we didn't come up with. Uh, or we maybe we do come up with it like, uh, can we really trust them? But for the time being, we can secretly, uh, only known to the characters on this ride, uh, go down Big Ben to this next level, which would be like a sub-basement uh, Andy Hall's level. And uh, then this is where we'd have to try to find the speaker wires, and we still are designing this room, right? Uh, but that basically we'll go down there uh, next uh, and then look for Mary Blair, speaker wires, what else we could find, but probably with the anticipation that there's going to be a... Uh, some things we have to avoid. So what do we, like, let's go, let's, uh, so we do, we did some dexterity checks, uh, or whatever. And, uh, obviously I guess I would be going first uh, and testing everything out uh, and saying it's clear. 
and everybody's coming with me and we're saying, okay, we want to make sure we can get out. Uh, but if anybody, so we'll probably leave a second hidden set of like, just like something to help us come back up. Uh, I mean, I would use a pulley, uh, but we'll put it down the shaft a little bit uh, so that in case they tell on us, the duels team won't see this pulley. I'll hide it uh, so we could still get out. But we get down to this uh, handy halls level, and there's a pile of junk of old, uh, some parts of the attraction, speakers, maybe even some speaker wire. Uh, as we all get down there, though, then we notice uh, something's happening. What is, is something happening? Um, we're all getting really tired, like, uh, and we say, oh, no, there's a surprise down here, a sleep surprise, and we all start to fall asleep. Uh, we all roll, and none of our rolls work out, and we fall into a deep, deep slumber. Good night. All right, I want to thank uh, Joanne, Gwen, and Stacy for becoming patrons recently, and Kimberly, Tara, and Theo. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Tyler, A, and Margo, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, Jordan, Matt, and Lauren, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Lisa, J, and Thomas, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Alex, Infamous, and Tom, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Joanne, Tara, and John, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. PJ, Bob, and Rochelle, thank you, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody who supports this show directly on Patreon or Apple Podcasts or supports our sponsors, and thanks, everybody, who spreads the word and helps grow the podcast. Uh, it's been a huge help. I couldn't do it without all of you. And, uh, yeah, and here's a tuck you in sponsor, Scoots. Uh, and that's how we've been grown the show to uh, almost 600 uh, free episodes in the archives. Good night, everybody.